What's up, y'all? Welcome to Mango Bay. We talk the richest man in the world, uh, and we talk the Iran crisis right now. Uh, hijabs abound. Come on in. Mango Bay, Mango Bay. <laughs> For the exclusive content, don't forget to join our Patreon at patreon.com slash mango bay. Mango, 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 mango bay. Hello, it's Mango Bay. About to get brown up in this bitch. About to get brown up in this bitch. It's really, it's really sticking, actually. <laughs> you might have to. It's, got, it's about to get brown up in this bitch. <laughs> we sound like Tiffany Haddish, but like brown. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. It's getting brown up in this bitch. Can I get a hell yeah? We are two best boys who are brown comics who bring the South Asian recklessness to the news, to what's going on, to what's happening, to the stories, to the ideas. That's, good our, time. that's our official log line. What's official, that? Yeah, <laughs> our official log paragraph. It's a good time. What's thanks, happening? Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming out. We got a jungly story, which is basically just a wild story for the week. Um, I did this role. Can't say specify what role it was, but uh, in uh, uh, part of it, I had to do a uh, girdle. I have, to put where they, I have to have a boner in a scene, but you can't. Ooh. Ooh. Just be method actor about it. You have that's not allowed. Not the good old I days. tried. I was in my rider. You know, we're in beauty. You just yeah. have boners. No fluffer required back then. <laughs> so they were like, we need to have like a little apparatus. And they uh, they took me into the the trailer. They kept being like, no, we're gonna get like a a small one for you. And I'm like, dude, can we just not a small? Can we just get the biggest <laughs> possible? We're gonna get you a small. They wanted to get me like a small one. I'm like, dude, do not. Make me typecast as small dick guy. Well, like, yeah, and you know what? If they give you a small one, it's like that becomes the story. Then. That's what I'm saying. You dude, know, dude. If, That's what I'm saying. Then it's like the whole episode should be about small that. Small dick brown like guy, micro penis guy. So they had like four or five options, and one was like you know Hitler's penis. One was like you know, <laughs> one was like normal penis. Then one was like, okay, we're getting black. Then there was like <laughs> El Diablo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was the one I wanted. I was like, yeah. I was like, it's the props department. I was like, please, can I just get the fucking, it'll be funny, it'll be hilarious. Um, and they're like, no, we can't, we can't. I, I, I was really pulling for this big dick. And uh, I, they got me, they gave me like the second biggest one. Um, and basically, I, basically the, the, there's a scene where I, have to, I get one and they show it like in a funny way. My mom sees it and I'm like, ah, oh, mom, my boner. <laughs> And so and then the boner just keeps growing. <laughs> They're like, it's a two pronged boner. Get out of here, mom. <laughs> oh, mom. mom what are you awesome. wearing? <laughs> yeah, this, I was doing porn up. I was doing porn up. Is that up. a new perfume? The, the mom. cat's out of the condom. Ah, get out of here. Uh, mom, Smelling like a spring day. Ah. Mom, what are you doing? Mom. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Did we get the stun double? No. <laughs> I got this. Um, and so I, I uh, wore this little girdle thing, bro. It was squeezed like, dude, we're talking like that. Uh, my balls were gone into my body. It was like a really tight underwear that they put on. Nice. And you put like a, the dick inside. You put like a hard dick inside the dick. It's like, a, it's like a wooden catheter for the dick so it can stay up. You know what I'm Whoa. saying? It's, it's a whole apparatus, bro. Um, and then uh, the, <laughs> here's the, like, the prop girl. Like, it was like a hot person. I was like, I'll just, I got, I got this. I don't mean It goes up. I go inside the stage like where they're they going to film. People are giggling. I didn't realize how uh, offensive that would be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even my dick, but it's still like, you know, the eighth grade comes back a little bit. I know, bit. of like, course. Yeah. Everyone's like, looking at your... Geez, whoa. I, th- I thought I was a confident guy. I've, yeah. I've made strides in my... And who I am, and then one girl going, and I'm like, I'm so, mom! all of a sudden the fake dick starts fake peeing <laughs> in your pants. Why do they even have that function? Why do they even put that in there? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> They're building a fake mommy to help me get, yeah. get through it. Um, Kenneth Yang was there, who was the guy who used to when I was changing in the stalls, he would jump up over the stalls. Like, <laughs> I see your dick. Why is he here? 
<laughs> he's the grip for some reason. Fucking <laughs> Kenneth Yang. That guy was a pervert, dude. <laughs> That guy was a pervert. He didn't know how to just like come out of the closet. So he had to dress it up bro, as like bro behavior. I, like, you want to just saw your dick again, bro? What up? <laughs> dude, I just jacked you off again, yeah. dude. Oh my god. You just came so much, dude. dude. Yo, Usama just came a ton bro, on my lower us, back. Taste this, you gay bitch. Yeah. Kenneth Yang was gay. I, I stand by that. This guy this motherfucker had a had a portable hentai. Portable device for just hentai. It only played hentai. Nothing else. Like you only got that. That's, like, that's from a Japanese alleyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's you get in the back of a pachinko, pachinko machine ball. Yeah. You win pachinko. They're like, come to this room, and they <laughs> give you like a hentai only machine. Uh huh. So they're laughing at me. They're laughing at me, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of weird. So I'm like, they're like, should we make it more up? Because all you know, women in the the the, the crew, and they're like, does it look like that? I'm like, yeah, it looks like that. Should we make it move more up? And I'm like, what? So uh, there's one male guy that I try to bring in, like, hey, hey, ally, this is not real. Bro, he looked at me like he had a sex change that moment. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He took and threw me out to dry because he saw they were laughing at me. He's like, I don't want any part of this. Well, what was he What was he afraid of? I don't know. You were asking him for what? For just, his Just like input? a confirmation that dicks can look like this. Yeah. They don't need to go up. Right, uh, yeah. And he's like, I've never had a dick. What? Yeah, you don't. What? He just totally left me out to dry because he was yeah, he was didn't like the fact that I was getting laughed at. So, you know, it was just weird. I, I became a little boy again. Um, but I came. Don't you worry. Don't, out you, of the don't you fucking worry. Don't you worry. I, I, my ball squeezed. Uh, I just didn't like how, how that dude in the face of uh, a bunch of women just stopped having a dick. Like, literally. Yeah. He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. A dick? I don't know what that's all about, dude. Just, just get away from me. Then some trans lady who's a guy tried to chime in. Like, I have no idea. This is true. Some some trans <laughs> who became a guy like two weeks ago or something like that was like, I have no idea. Ask about it. Wait, they just had transitioned into male? Yeah. Why would they be like, I have no idea? I think she wanted people to talk about his, her. Yeah. It oh. Just, like just, just came in. It just came in. There, oh, so yeah. maybe meaning she does have an idea. But she's like. she uses the fake, uh, the prosthetic or whatever. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. So weirdos. Just weirdos. It was people looking at my dick. I'm telling you, bro, it wasn't great. <laughs> that is that is that would that would make me cringe for sure. But it was fine. It was a funny scene. We did it. But uh, you know, you, you don't realize that you're maybe not ready to go fully. Like even in your thirties, you're just like, dude, fucking right. Oh, meaning your inner child is yeah. now is now there. in the four. It's still yeah. you can't escape it. You should never escape it. It should be always be a part of you. But I mean, when it comes out in front of a thousand people, you're like, you just. I know. Well, you know what? That's how men are most vulnerable is with our, our junk, you know? And bro, this was in Crown Heights, the home of the black teenager. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Now> you're shooting? <laughs> if we, we did shoot outside for a little bit. It was during school, but we're all like, the moment we finished the scene, the moment I took it off, 19,000 black kids started running around like, oh my God. <laughs> That was close. Wait, what did the prosthetic look like? Was it just like a dildo? Veiny dick with like a hole in it. So it's like a, a place to insert. Like a little wooden, you know, kind of insert. And then it's on like a kind of like a girdle you're wearing. Wow. Girdle, wooden, like Pinocchio's nose type shit. Slap that on. Put the pants on. Woo! Props. Props. Literally. Props. <laughs> wow. Wild, I, yeah, it is wild. It's wild, wild. That is what that's a, that's a fun experience, though. It's very goofy. How dude. long did you have to keep that in your pants? Uh, <laughs> Seriously, uh, maybe like an hour. Like an hour? Yeah. Did it feel weird? Did you I, feel yeah, powerful? I had a phantom dick afterwards. You know, like my dick itches, yeah. <laughs> but there's no dick there. <laughs> Someone wearing my dick? What's going on? <laughs> uh, no, it was fine. But when when I took it off, because it was so pressurized. Because it's that girdle squeezes the balls. Oh, really? Yeah, because where's your actual dick during all this? That's what I'm saying, dude. You just cry tough. That's what I'm in. saying, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's like laying. Like, hey, there. man. Hey, I'm here, I'm here too. What's going on? <laughs> My dick's like a gecko on a wall. Just like, <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was brutal. It was brutal. That's my jungle story for the week. Yeah, that's pretty wild. <laughs> that's pretty wild. I've never had to wake up, wear a fake. Yeah, yeah, a fake dick. I am, on the other hand, going to be in the. Series finale of the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So keep an eye out for He's me. He's actually playing one dildo. This is going to be yeah. a full. I'm playing the prop ma- a prop master. 
Uh, I don't. I. I. Uh, yeah. I have What's one line. I'm, it's guy. I have one line. Nice, okay. One speaking line. But you're speaking, dude. I'm speaking. That's the thing. That's the thing. The king of the one-liners out here, dude. I saw you on. The, it was on Law and Order SVU. As the assaulter. Do you need a weird? Yeah, I mean, you would think, right? But no, unfortunately not. I wasn't. I wasn't typecast. I wasn't cast to my strength. Sadly. <laughs> That's the thing. Is like, you, if you're just that guy, if you just get cast as rapist number three, like for a while, for eventually, a while. You're like, all right, just, if you if you ask for it, you I mean, know? there's definitely people like that. What do you mean? You like that? They, yeah. just, they just get cast as the villains. Yeah. yeah, who just get pat cast as villains or rapey type dudes yeah. or. You know, like there's this one guy. He's an actor. He's like a Chicano or or Latin actor. Trejo. Huh? No, not Danny Trejo. I mean, although him definitely. Yeah. Sure, I mean, he just plays himself wherever he goes. Hey, play you ten years yeah. ago. Can you do that? Okay, got it. We need uh, we need somebody who looks like they were born in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on in, Danny Trejo. His his diet only consists of prison food. That's yeah. like just a biscuit, dude. I saw him in Heat. I finally saw Heat. You finally watched Heat. Phenomenal. You keep going. Incredible movie. But there are actors who are typecast yeah. like this, you know? It's interesting. I mean, there was, uh, you know, Jackie Schroff yeah. was, uh, you know, angry, assaulty dad. Yeah, but that's all. If his era, him, Anil uh, Kapoor, they all had Puri. the same vibe. Amrish Puri. Amrish Puri, yeah. Very evil looking dude, you know? Dude. Yeah, I mean, in, Indi- in India, I think it's even more. Right. The typecasting is in. I think you play a villain once, you're a villain. You're a villain, dude. That's right? it. Like, I don't think I've ever they, they, seen they Amitabh. A, they have a PH kind of counter. Exactly. And it's litmus, and it's after a certain darkness. It's yeah, like, well, exactly. It's henchman. I, like, you'll never see Amitabh playing a villain. Oh, right? dude. He never played villain, ever? Even Shah Rukh Khan did Bazigar. I did, not to my knowledge. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. Okay, okay. Shah Rukh Khan was in one villain movie. He was Bazi, in Bazigar, he was the villain. Right. Yeah. So they have that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I've never seen it, but... Amish Puri. It's whatever. The poor Ebros. They both because they have evil looking eyes. Yeah. This guy eyes. was so evil. He played an evil Indian in a white movie. Oh yeah? Temple of Doom. Oh, he was Oh yeah. Amrish. Yeah. Legend. Bro. Dude, for real. And every other picture of him was Shark him in white kutas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Amazing. Just so you know. Hey, this guy prays a lot though. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, stories for the week. We got Quick well, one. We talk about the hijab. Oh, go ahead. Just a quick one. Just, just a little ticker. A guy named Gautam Adani for one little bit ousted Jeff Bezos as the richest man on earth. Yeah. I'm telling you, we told you once, we'll tell you if I can again. 2050, it's Indians everywhere, dude. Dude, it's like 2030. 2030, you think? Even even less than it's, that. It's That's where it's heading, dude. Look at this, the speed with which Indians are rapidly rising to the fore Bro. of so many it's corporations, over. Over, the centers dude. of power. Dude, dude, we're in Google. We're in Starbucks. Starbucks. Pepsi. Pepsi. Like you know, Pornhub, Chippendales. Chippendales. <laughs> <laughs> what next? What next, dude? Pornhub. When he gets an Indian CEO, we rename Pranhub. Pranhub. Get ready for that, huh? Pranhub. Just, just, just a quick ticker right there that Indians are, are coming up. This guy's in Gotham and he's, he looks like a fucking. Yeah, I've you know, seen a boss. few pictures now. He looks like the. He looks like a boss. He looks like Tony Soprano. If Tony Soprano put on a Groucho Marx. Mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know yeah. the mustache and the glasses, not the glasses, but the mustache and the nose. That's definitely. He's fully, his he doesn't look like a, he looks like Mr. Mr. Aluhead. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, Mr. Aluhead. <laughs> dude, it looks. He looks just like him actually. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I I just think with the the story here is that there's just no way you can escape the, the hegemony of India, the Indianification of the world. This is how you know you're coming to the end of the world right now is because it's all coming back to the beginning of the world when Indians were in charge. Indians were bringing so all think, the uh, treasure, all the riches, all the knowledge. It's not gonna go full cycle though, because I can't imagine a British CEO of Google. You know what I'm saying? Like, hello, no, no. hi, I'm I'm no. Boris. We're going to take Google to new heights, isn't it? It's like, okay, dude, nice. That was a one-time thing, Brits. One-time thing. You had your time, you had your fun. Yeah. It's like going back around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Brits, I don't know. It's it's we, it's a weird thing because we're talking about corporations right now, right, which do right. run the world, and Indians are starting to run the corporations. Right. Like, what? It was the British East Indies Company sure. that did all the damage, right, that, that started everything. I mean, what are British people actually good at, though? 
you can't look at them and be like Indians. You can look at them and be like they're very good at math. Mm. You know, they're like math, astronomy. These are things from ancient times. Very good sure, at. Sure. You know, what are British people good? They at? can scream while painted red and white. That's yeah, what, pretty much. They're good at that. Then. They're really good. They at can that. maraud. They can maraud. Yeah. They are. Um, they can die if they're they the queen. Can die. <laughs> they're good at having pimples. Bad um, teeth. They're bad good at teeth. Not brushing their teeth. What else? What, what, what do British actually have? Like, what's actually a good thing? Music. Music is fire. Yeah. Poor Brits are fucking the shit. Baking. They got some sick treats. I, I've never watched that show, but I could imagine. I'm a baking fan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like that shit. You know, <laughs> but the mom, but you know what they did one time. This is how this is how this is how like British cuisine has nothing. They had to do a Mexican week for one of their shows. It's like we just listen to a Mexican week because we don't have anything else left for y'all. <laughs> you know? How did it get past like two episodes, dude? I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. But you're right. You're right. I, I think I think British people are good at acting. They got at acting. They take all our jobs in America. Yeah, they do American face. Well, they were acting in the in the 1800s too. Like, oh, we're not going to take anything. Yeah. We're just going to trade. Let's you, trade a little you bit. You like huh? trade? You like, you like our, our guns, eh? And see. Yeah. <laughs> hey, try this. Try opium. Hey, you, you like, like this? Nice. It goes well with your tea. <laughs> they, were the, they were acting back then. They were killing acting. They've been thespians for yeah, a long time. I guess so. Literature? Literature, Maybe, Dickens. Right? They can act. I, I, I'd give acting to Brits. I think they might be yeah. the best actors. Interesting. You know? How many fucking... Definitely not Indians. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think you're right. No, I mean, not like... I mean, like, I look at Bollywood. I'm like, this is just, you know... I think you're right. I'm a, I'm a Bollywood detractor, though. I grew up in Bollywood, but I didn't know that it's, that it's kind of shit, you know? No, I grew up on watching it as well. Yeah. But I was like... I could even tell without any other thing. I was like, this is dumb. I think we're, you're right that we're not as good at actors in general because there's too much excitement in our day to day. We're very like, ah, oh, don't. Uh. Oh, like it's in ha- India? Yeah, in India. It's already so dramatic. Very dramatic people that it all looks mellow. Yeah. We're just in our, in our lives, we're very melodramatic people. So in acting, to tone it down makes no sense to us. That's way. true. Everything's a performance. You know what I'm saying? Whereas British people, you know. Acting, good acting is it's conflict, right? British person starts aging at like fifteen. They they start really feeling the body. It's true. The tra- it's <laughs> they true. Get die. Eventually, that's going to create a very powerful actor. That's my take. That's my theory on British acting. Interesting, interesting take. Um, All right, and this is the the final story for this week, and this is the kind of the big one. The hijabs, the hijabs in Iran. Hijabaronis, dude. Hijabaroos. Hijabarodes. Hijabrods. <laughs> it's very interesting that the hijab is whatever men project it to be, sure. right, in these countries. The sure. women are actually never in the equation. So the story is, we're talking about Iran today with uh, Masa Amini, uh, the, the thing that, you know, exploded. The Kurdish woman who died in custody. Uh, in and then uh, exploded a whole movement. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Pretty, 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 it's pretty a crazy. Off the wall. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, here's the thing, man. Uh, I grew up with a lot of hijabis. They wore it because they wanted to. Some of them were forced to. That was not a cool vibe because they're mm-hmm. all weird. And they end up sucking some dick behind a, you know. Behind a hijab. <laughs> behind another hijab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, mask on, mask off, yeah. a la COVID times. Um, it is it is very patriarchally politicized in every uh, facet. Yeah. Yeah, France is trying to wear it. Iran's trying to take it off. Right. In France, they're trying to get rid of the, right. the burkini. Well, there's a difference between the burqa and the hijab, right? Right. Hijab is just covering hair. Yeah. Burqa is the whole full on, full on ninja gaiden. Yeah. Uh, uh, and is that also the face cover too? Yeah, I think burqa involves everything. Porta. Well, porta is like the curtain, right? You know? Porta. But I'm not sure if that is in the <laughs> wild. Also, you can just go through it. It's kind yeah. of a porous material anyway. Um, it's like a dental dam. The, yeah. <laughs> the Muslim dental dam <laughs> is just silk. <laughs> the porta. Yeah. Try this. That, that's how good the silks are. You can give a blowjob through them. <laughs> that's quality. That's quality. You can't do that with polyester. I'll that right you now. can't. You can't at all. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I don't. I, I, it seems like uh, 
Iran is just at the end. Have you, have you seen those videos where those 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 fucking thirteen year old girls are just like ripping on, like just beating up like officers? Uh, I've seen like CCT footage where like a cop is alone in the street, and then all of a sudden like four a people swarm on him of, of teenagers, beat the shit out of him, dude. I will say that Muslim teenage girls are some of the horniest, meanest, uh, most terrifying people on earth. Uh, like they will eat your ass. There's a lot of a lot being repressed there, right? One hundred percent. It's almost a weird thing, like because I feel like the women who are like in India. There was a whole thing of like, oh, in South India, these girls, they were like forced to take off the hijab, right? right? And then they were like, no, pro hijab. We should be able to wear it, right? Sure. In Iran, it's like, no, we don't want to fucking wear this, right? right? Um, in France, again, like India. It, right. And it's because it's it's once you're able to persecute the entire group like that, then the women will circle the wagons and be like, no, this is a symbol of us. This sure. is who we are, our culture, et cetera. Do women want to wear hijabs? Who the fuck knows? Right. It should be a personal choice, but you never really hear it in in anything. You don't right. hear you don't you don't like you don't really hear their voices in any of these conversations, actually, right? Because even in a case where it's like, okay, women in India who are being it's like, yeah, okay, the women are protesting, but they're backed by like Muslim organizations that are sure. like, no, we need to this is the culture, this is the Muslim culture, and blah blah blah. Right. 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 Likewise, in Iran, it's like, you know, they don't want to wear it and they're immediately getting fucking whatever, steamrolled or whatever right, right, it is, right. right? Or shot in the street or whatever right. it is. I don't know. Do you, did your mom wear a hijab growing no. up? No. She used to hate them. Okay. <laughs> my mom does not like mullahs. I call them mullahs. And uh, my mom hated their uh, sanctimonious nature in our, in our community. Yeah. A lot of the older hijabis were ex whores or something like that, you know, who like find the hijab. <laughs> it's so crazy. They're ex whores. whores. This is my mom talking right now through me, to be honest. This is how my mom raised me. So <laughs> don't, don't think this is some rogany thing. This is not, yeah. this is my mom talking right now. She would go, when we came to Texas, she would go to the, um, we'd go to the mosque and for, for community and for prayer and stuff like that. My, they would, um, my mom's favorite story to tell about these women is that anytime, uh, she'd be talking without her hijab on. They'd come from behind and put the hijab on. No. And my mom is like, you fucking bitch. And then she'd go suck someone's dick just to show her that, that she could. It was for a principal. I didn't want to suck his dick. But um, she hated that. She would always like rag on that. Like, why did they put the hijab on me? I don't want to wear it. Fuck you. Mm. Bitch. Once that happened, she bounced. Uh, she's like, fuck these. This happened one time, and she was like, I'm She done was with over these it, people. dude. Because when we first came to New York, uh, Dallas, she was trying to find different communities. Yeah. And she was like, maybe I'm, I'll go with the Muslims. They were just so sanctimonious. And again, this is not obviously all Muslims. This is just the Muslims that were from in Dallas. Um, you know, when I would uh, pray and I would get a, a, a ride from my boy Sean, his mom, who was a hijabi Bengali, would uh, quiz me on uh, surahs and shit. You and of course, it. you know how this goes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was yeah. Just, and I would, I would do a classic, like, kid, like, I did so much of it, I'm tired. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm fried. And she's like, okay. Are you sure you didn't forget it? No, I, I just did so much. I, I'm just tired. Swear to God. Then it was her fucking son, who's my friend. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't forget it? I'm like, bitch, uh, double. I'm getting reamed by these, this Muslim family on the way home. Yeah. I felt terrible about myself. <laughs> I felt terrible. So that, that was our experience with the hijabis. Sounds like a fucking. Do you know any women now who are your friends who wear hijab? Of course, so many, so many. In college, they became when I went because that was that was like fourth grade, fifth grade, yeah, right when that era was happening. But one time I went to college, many cool hijabis, one of my best friends. Shout out to Sabah. why do they like wearing the hijab? What was their thing with it? They're very Muslim. They 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 you know they they live in Islam. They right. they pray. They're in it. It's not some feminist thing for them. They believe that it's the thing you have to do, which is beautiful for them, and they, right. they take the choice. But right. they're not forced. They're all very choice based. Now my other hijabi friend Saba will be you know she'll go to hijabi sometimes. We were talking about the trans bathrooms and that one um, right wing idea. Like what if they rape you in the bathroom and then. I'm like, isn't that the same thing as like Syrian refugees coming here and we're just assuming they're terrorists? She's like, yeah. no, because sometimes they would rape in the back. <laughs> she was fully on the Syrian side, but fully against the trans. Like she couldn't see the yeah. parallels. Yeah, of that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they still have like some of those like old school like Muslim ideals. Mm. But, you know, they're cool. They're cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it means something totally different to wear a hijab yeah. in the United States than it does to wear a hijab in Saudi Arabia or in Iran. Oh, yeah, bro. You know, yeah. Here it's like you do it as a way of like I want to differentiate myself a little bit, a little bit, right? It's like no, this is I'm different. You know, oh, aren't I mysterious? It's yeah, me. what's underneath here? It's me. Ooh. Yeah, because you know that you know that because they'll do the hijab, 
and they'll wear the tightest clothes. It's all, it's all still looking for you. Right. Still want to be seen. Yeah. You know, it's not some sort of like, and they wear makeup and yeah, all that. It's not you like know? some religious. Thing. Yeah. It's not like they're not vain, you yeah. know, that, that, that being the point. Right. So I, I always find it very funny where, or interesting the, the different motivations for wearing the hijab. Right. There, there's like the gamut. I mean, we had, we had Saba who was like just a good Muslim, but you know, uh, fun, but definitely put on makeup and stuff like that. We had, uh, Rabia and you know what that means. Oh, she rubbed, you know, definitely Rabia. She all Rabia. <laughs> she all Rabia. She was the one who was like wearing the tightest pants. Titus just tits out. I'm getting horny hijab. just thinking about her. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Mia Khalifa, Proto. Yeah. Proto Khalifa. She was sucking some skater's dick all the time. You know what I'm saying? The proverbial skater's dick and always doing some crazy shit. Whatever. But she had a hijab on because her family forced her. So that was right. the... The hoe who's a hoe at heart, right? But the family forced her. Maybe right. the, the, she was. She probably ge- just didn't even notice it was on. It was like it's on, and now I'm gonna go suck some dick. It, it was like her head foreskin. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, whatever. exactly. But there are probably some women who are like, oh, I'm about to suck a dick. Let me put on my hijab, spice it up, spice a little. it up. You know, that was <laughs> I had her once. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't. I bleeped that name. Out. I had her. Okay, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had her once. We'll have to bleep that out. That that was that was a lot of raw man that came out of now. Bleep that out. Thank you, buddy. I've been watching Spartacus, okay? What does that have to do with it? I've been watching Spartacus. Spartacus, what does that have to do with anything? That's kind of, <laughs> I'm in a space. <laughs> um, that was the one hijabi that I, that I uh, like, while she had it on, I was like, no, we're taking it off. And he's like, no. We're keeping it on. Did you like it better with it? I did. <gasps> like, it would be very hot yeah. to... Sleep with a woman while she was wearing a hijab. Yeah, because it's again you're transgressing in such a deep way. It's that, but it's also like it kind of becomes like lingerie or something at that yeah. point because it's the only <laughs> garment she has on, right? Right. right. So and it has some... an extra spiritual bent. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to like objectify or be crude or anything, but like there is something really erotic to me about not seeing a woman's hair and then her taking it off and then it sure. just flows down. Of course. You know? of course. Wait, she takes it off or she leaves it on during the th- the act? She keeps leaves it on. Is that required? Uh, oh. Whoa, no. Oh. No. No. Oh. In fact, you're not supposed to bang at all, dude. Right. Right. So the idea is like, for your husband, you let your hair loose. Mm. But this woman was kind of, you know, she was down. So she... Uh, kept it on? Kept it on. Oh, my God. But yeah. <laughs> Joe's getting excited. I, I, I was waiting for Joe to breathe heavily. I was waiting. <laughs> I was like, this is pretty hot, Joe. <laughs> and she, she, would, she would basically... Oh, my God. That I, She's awesome. She's married now. Great person. She's cool as hell. Um, Got to <laughs> say this. Got to say this. After I said I had her... Um, she, um, uh, she had texted, I had texted her like in Facebook, like, Hey, we should hang out sometime. And like, she didn't respond for a year and a half. Uh-huh. Then one day I met her with her family at the mall. I was hanging out doing, doing some work and, uh, she was there and I had been pretty chill. Like I was like, Hey, what's up? Hey, your family's cool. Hey, what's up? And they walked away. Then I get a text two days later. Like, that was awesome. How you with my family? It's what are you doing? Tomorrow, and I'm like, uh, nothing. I look at my Snapchat, just nine nudes. I'm no. like, ah! I'm a little 21 year old bitch. Amazing. I'm like, I'm like freaking out, dude. I'm freaking amazing. This is the hottest, one of the hottest women I've ever met in my life, in general, with, with yeah. the job on. And she was like, Here, try this on for size, which is, I guess, a cool back then yeah. that phrase. Try this on for size. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bang this hijabi. Ah! And then I had an apartment, I had an apartment off campus, and uh, I was like, "Just come here." Uh, I'm like shaking outside. She drives in, she comes out full garbaroni, dude. We're where, where, where is she? Where is she? Where, was she Pakistani? Pakistani. 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 Okay. So, oh, add another layer. Oh yeah, add another fucking layer, dude. You should have known you're getting laid when you saw her driving. <laughs> <laughs> This whore oh, yeah. behind the wheel. Oh, it's going. And it's sundown. You know what's going down. What is this, nighttime? Oh, shit. Unaccompanied by any other male, <laughs> by a male relative? At dusk? Oh, she gonna God. give it up. Oh, that dusk pussy. That dusk pussy. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, and it was. And it was. She, get out, she gets out, all, all Muslim garbed out. And she's like, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Walk up to her. I'm like, I can't even kiss a girl yet. I'm like so terrified. She's like, just fucking do it. 
she became a Nike model, you know, immediately. And I fucking went in and we went up and we fucked. Oh, wow. And, and she you know kept what? it on? But you know what it is? She's like one of those, uh, she kept it on. She's one of those like women who were like ho-ish, but didn't know the language exactly of being a ho. Yeah. So she, as we're, I was on fucking, she kept being, she kept going, uh, you're a machine. I think she heard it once. And yeah. She, that was yeah. her only ho phrase she knew. So she, for three, just 40 minutes, you're a machine. You're a machine. <laughs> <laughs> you're just a machine. <laughs> what kind of machine? Oh, uh, auto. <laughs> just an auto machine. Ooh, now you're an ice cream machine. Oh, yeah, and I'm a kid. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. It was like a, one of the wildest. Wow, and she kept it on. Kept it on. Can I ask one more question? Oh, the pl- ask 10. What's the pube situation? It was all, it was. Did they have a hijab on the pubes? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're really fighting for in Iran. Yeah. Uh, no, it was it was uh, cleaned up. Yeah. Completely? Um, no, it was, it was like a little bit of a you know, peach fuzz. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. oh. I'm, I guess that's racist to me, but I always just figured there's just a giant bush down there. That's orange, too? Like, like the wood? Yeah. The henna, <laughs> they, hen, they put henna in their bush. <laughs> it's got little glasses on it. It's oh. reciting the Quran because it's an imam. <laughs> It was one of the wildest experiences of my life. It was a hijabi. And, the, and, I, and she was awesome. And she, I think she left the hijab. Then she got it back for marriage. And it actually, her, her life cycle with the hijab was very fascinating because she was very, very Muslim. Yeah. Then she had a phase after we, we fucked for a little bit. She started like losing the hijab. I remember seeing her outside of the hijab. She graduated, left the hijab. Became, uh, she even talked to me about like leaving Islam for a little bit. And then I saw her a couple of years, couple of years later. She went back to the hijab. Had a husband, had a baby on the way. Wow. So this woman's life was very like high, you know, high up, high down, yeah. you know, high amplitude on her waves. And I think she landed at I'll wear a hijab. Sounds like husband. she's been going from hijab to hijab all her life. She's between hijabs, <laughs> between hijabs right now. <laughs> We've noticed a five year gap on between your hijabs. You want to explain that? <laughs> yeah. Just to Osama. Just to Osama. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's she found it again. Now she's fucking full, um, full uh, hijab again. Wow, I've never known a single woman with a hijab. Really? What? One, yeah. I don't think Indian Muslims aren't really. Yeah. Don't really do hijab much. Yeah. That that I've met and that I've known. That's crazy, dude. Um, I've never met a single woman like known a single woman who wears a hijab. I got my booster shot today, and uh, the woman who administered that had a hijab. Nice. And I was like, what's underneath there? It's not even hair. Girl? It's huh? just circuitry, bro. <laughs> K-wires. K-wires. <laughs> um, interesting, dude. I mean, you never... Your Muslim friends growing up were much more lax about it, right? Like, you never had, like, a diehard Muslim. No, I mean, that would be very Remember? difficult because hardcore Muslims really do self-segregate a lot. 100%. You know what I mean? And I was in there because I was in the MSA. I was... I had a lot of Pakistani friends, yeah. you know, who weren't really that Muslim, but their friend, their friends were very Muslim. So it was like a set, you know, a one degree of separation. I was in the MSA and I was in that bitch. You were in the Muslim Student uh, Association? Yeah. Yeah. And I was the treasurer. So why were you in that? My friends were in it. Okay. All my friends were in it. Just like to hang. To hang, dude. Yeah. I would go to the uh, meditation room to scope out chicks. Yeah. And then walk outside and wait. Oh, she's praying right now. Oh, dude. <laughs> I just praying right now. Let me go check that out. Ooh, how many rakats left, bruh? How many cycles left? That's horrible, dude. I do. I was, I was uh, disgusting. But I, I was probably the worst Muslim on that team. But I was like treasurer for one semester. They liked me. I was a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like treasurer for all this I get. Dead-ass. You like being the treasurer. You're good at that. I'm good, I'm good. You're our treasurer for and, this. And. For the money that we get every month. Good money. You distribute that. You're good with money. Yeah. That's yeah. good. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I do clips sometimes, so I control media as well. Yeah. You know you're, you're like a little Jew over <laughs> here, huh? Over here. It's nice. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Kanye. Hey. Kanye, we got one here for you. For a guy who hates Jews that much, he sounds like a Jewish uncle half the Does time. Does he hate Jews? What did he say <laughs> no. about them? He's going, I'm going, he says, he's like, I'm going DEFCON 2000 on some Jews later. <laughs> He he talked like a like a malfunctioning video game. Oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> All your Jew are belong to us, you know. Makes no sense, dude. That's in, that's incredible. It's insane, bro. It's, he's just he going crazy. He just needs more meds, bro. That's something like that. He needs better therapist or something. Something's going on. Either that, or he needs parlor. He needs to own the parlor app. That's the only medicine he needs. 
Yeah, he's gone fucking real cuckoo. He's gone. He's gone. Ghost, yeah. Bro. Uh, but I've never met a woman in a hijab. Yeah. I've always, I guess I'd want to. I don't know. I'm again, they're just people. I'll just say that right now. Yeah. Just so you all know. Um, they are human beings. But uh, they come in so many very different sizes. They go they go all the way from Rabia to, to Saba to this woman named Aisha Noor that I knew who was like this crazy hijab lady. Right. And some of them in, in, in uh, Dallas. Mm. Specifically Dallas. See, my concern is I would be I I'm I whenever I see a woman hijab, I'm just assumed that they would just find me to be a despicable <laughs> person because I'm Hindu, and aside from just my person, I just my, on a pure identity level. You know what? Um, I wouldn't know. Cause, but here's the thing: my Muslim friends didn't really hang out with that many Hindus. Like, yeah. um, we had some Indian friends, but like it was a pretty much like they say in the Muslims. Now it's very unsaid. It's very unsaid. Like they're not saying like no Hindus, but. No, no going out I, I know. I, I know. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Muslims really do stick to Muslims. Like, and you know, when Saba we came to New York, she moved in with three Muslims, Pakistanis. I'm like, you really don't want to. You don't want out of this. Wow. <laughs> she went out of her way to find an Arab bodega. Like this bitch was. Well, she wanted a fucking Muslim life. Yeah, I you mean, know? But it makes sense. And she's awesome, know? dude. She's one of the best friends. She has a kid now, or you know, it's awesome. She's very fun and funny and all that good stuff. But you say Hindu. No, she's fine. But he's a de- dentist now. She'd be like, don't do. Don't How about that? do, buddy. <laughs> he's a dentist, you know, and she's like a nice, hot little dentist. Got a great Open husband. up and say, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she gets him. Every patient. Uh, you're Hindu, huh? Uh, anesthesia, we're not going to need that today. We're just going to go <laughs> straight in. Uh, don't you worry about it. It's not going to hurt a little. Ah! The screams of Hindus. The screams of Hindus. Um, I went to a Muslim... Dentist okay. a couple months ago. So this happened? isn't a, even a joke. And it was just in my neighborhood. It was pretty much the same, except I walked past one of the rooms where they clean people's teeth and they were just using it as like a storage room. So it was like all the dentist stuff and then like a power washer <laughs> and like a snowblower in there. Wait, what? There's a lot of clutter. Okay. That's, that's the only difference. Yeah. Are you asking if this is a Muslim thing? Like Muslims have clutter? It was just like, like I'd be in the, you know, get my teeth clean and there's like, Old Amazon boxes yeah. in the room. Oh, and no, stuff I see. Like I, that. I'm getting the image. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, Muslims can be funky in that. I, I had a, on a Medicaid, I had an Arab optometrist, and every time I would go, he would rebuke me for not having glasses, mm. and then he would give me a, um, and then he gave me a prescription that was like uh, vindictive. He's like, your problem is you've been looking at too many tits. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Arab, your problem is uh, looking at too many tits. Yeah, yeah. You're nearsighted. Yeah. Can't see God. <laughs> hmm? Get farsighted. Look at God's tits. the hereafter. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, but he was like, he was he was crazy. He was like in a shabby shop and uh, he gave me a, a, a prescription that was like eight times the actual one I needed. I took it to LensCrafters. They're like, who gave you this? I'm like, don't even ask. This is Muslim optometrist. He wanted to kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Just wild. He's like, read the chart, and it's just the Quran. Yeah, <laughs> it's an Arabic. I don't know Arabic. He's like, you definitely need these. No, he does one or two, but one's in English and one's in Arabic. <laughs> one or two, one or two. Oh my god! <laughs> the fucking Muslim optometrist. He was terrifying, dude. He was terrifying, dude. He was fucking terrifying, bro. He hated me. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, hijab. If you have a daughter, would you make her wear a hijab? No. What the fuck? <laughs> Unless I was fucking her. I don't know. Unless I, I was fucking her. I don't know why I asked you that. <laughs> we uh, can I just say something. What's that? Here we go. I just thought of it. Stupid. Like if you're nearsighted or farsighted. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, what? Near sighted or, Jaf- or Jafar sighted? Oh my god! I'll cut it out. No, 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 no keep you keep that in, in Joe. <laughs> keep it in, dude. You keep that in. Nope. The lights, <laughs> they're a little Aladdin. That's the level. That's the level we're, we're at right now. <laughs> no, I, I would never make my daughter wear a hijab. I mean, I, in fact... Uh, what if she, she wanted to? I wonder what it was about. I'd be like my mom. One time my, my brother came home in a Allah who likes a hijab. Necklace, oh, okay. In a hijab. <laughs> with lipstick on. <laughs> That'd be two trans. Yeah. Because we're like, we're like not Muslim and then they became Muslim and trans. Oh my God. Uh, he came in with an Allahu bracelet. My mom, my, my brother came with like a, that said Allah on it, like a big necklace. He just walked into the house. Wait, who, Noel? Noel. And my mom looked at him like he, like the end of Requiem for a Dream. Like that, those are two dildos on your fucking get out 
of this house. So he came in with an, an Allah chain. Yeah. No, was it like black? Like, was it like gold with like bling? It was like uh, silver. You know, Muslims love okay, silver. Okay, so this is like a devout thing. Devout thing, dude. Okay. He came What'd in. your mom do? She started yelling at him. She's like, this is because of Syed. Syed was this guy who like indoctrinated my brother into Islam. But he was out there fucking all these different women. So like, mm. he was like a weird teacher that was like fucking everybody, but like also teaching Islam. That's a great like, way of like indoctrinating men. Be like, look how much pussy I'm getting. Look at this, dude. It's in my wives. He's taking off that job. Dude. Yeah. Um, and he was crazy. He had a kid in Dubai. Never raised it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he pays child support in dinar. That's that's some real shit, dude. You know. Um, and my brother came in with the Islam, and my my dad was like, my dad's like heavy anti. My mom was like, oh no. My dad's like bringing out the twelve gauge. Yeah. Like, I will shoot this gin. <laughs> you know. What? What? Is your brother still devout? No, no, no. He's not. Not at all. No, Arnav had a little phase. They all had a phase and they bounced. I'm the only one who kind of like stayed in the mix. Yeah. You know, and I'm bad. I'm bad to the bone. But. <laughs> <Shut> the <fuck. laughs> bad to the bone. Oh, and your mom's not devout at all. No, no, no. Mm. The whole family's a bunch of heathens, but your boy. That's the Bengali thing. The Bengali thing, dude. Yeah. We're, we're very Bengali. Heavy Bengali tradition, but yeah. not really uh, not really fucking uh, Muslim. Yeah. But I, I kept it. I kept it like a low hum. It's just kind of on. Yeah. It's kind of on. It still is on. And all bit. I do is get shit on by other Muslims on this pod for, for, my for actual... not being a good enough Muslim, which I'm just like, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm working on it. Dude. I don't get that. I don't get that. Islam mean, is a lot of, again, they have a lot of like bullying culture in the Islam. I mean, it is like a lot about peer pressure, right? Yeah. It's a conversion and yeah. da, 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 and you staying in the faith and all that. Right. And it is a community. That's the thing. That's the thing. Islam is able but, to pull off I will that say Christians this, or not. That, you know, you're seeing Iran right now. It's like these fuckers are together. And I like that. That's yeah. Islam is an amazing tire yeah. of people. And Bin Laden knew it. I know it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's the truth, dude, is that it is a tire. For better or for worse, Islam is a, be- is a big tire. It fucking locks you in. Yeah. Christianity, Protestant, Methodist, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Muslims are like, oh, freaking Muslim, bro. Yeah. Mostly Sunni. There's three. You have three, three choices. But you're in there. Yeah. Freaking in there, dude. So I will say this. I like, you know, the th- same thing that maybe caused 9-11 is also causing a lot of hijabis to rise up against this fucking uh, government right now in Iran. So that's, you know, you can go both ways. This, mm. this insane kind of really powerful idea of Islam and what it means. I mean, these bitches are crazy in Iran. They're going crazy. I, I, what, I are they it. devout Muslims who are rising up? Not really. Know, not really. But they're Muslim. Yeah. And the Islam t- it ties them together because the hijab is a Muslim idea. Right. It's a Muslim concept. Oh. Uh, and I, I fuck with that, dude. I fuck with that, that, that idea that, that Islam is bringing people together. The white hats in Syria, that's a Muslim idea. Right? Like, mm, that's not a Muslim company. Confusing something, yeah. The White Helmets. Yeah, they're no, not. That's like a CIA-backed oh, border, no, li- borderline terrorist organization. No, uh, yeah. But uh, I, I kind of like that these women are banded together. I like seeing women working together. Hey, who doesn't like that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or they're on the Iran's on a collective period or something, and give it a week or two, and <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. The fucking the Ayatollah says, uh, "On your period or something <gasps> to a whole nation." <laughs> <laughs> what are you on your period? <laughs> Chill out. You've been fine with this. So long. Everyone cycled together, huh? We're all cycling together. <laughs> My, I don't know about Iran because I don't know what's happening. But I'm wondering. Okay, is this like another CIA thing? Is the CIA like amplifying what's going on there, or is it actually a big deal? We don't really know. Bro, you tell me. I the don't. News. Really I don't know, know any of the news. You tell me the news. I try to stay you say, away from believe, the news now. You know, I, I, I try to stay away from it. From it now. It's good. Yeah. I don't think uh, you love the news. You're good at it, but you don't love it. It's like a weird talent. You know? Yeah, I don't love You're it. You're very good at the news. You're just one of your talents. I, I'm good terrible. at sniffing out in. Info, yeah, you know, but I don't. Uh, now I'm done with it. I don't yeah. like it. it. Makes it's, me upset. It's bad. It's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Unlike Mango Bay, which makes me happy. Any last words for the Khomeini, you know, squad? No squad no, goals. Uh, 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 you know, wear a hijab. Don't wear a hijab. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you fuck you want. Yeah. Uh, this has been Mango Bay. We love you guys. Thanks for fucking with us. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mango Bay. Mango Bay. Mango Bay.